Hello, what is going on, Senpai Squad? Welcome back to a brand new video, and I do want to apologize straight away that this review is late. I think the Eden Zero chapter came out like probably like 12 hours ago now, at the time I've actually come down to sit and record this, but you can blame England for that. England, I've just, I've just finished watching the England versus Columbia game, okay? So I'm, I'm a little bit excited, but without further ado, let's jump into this chapter of Eden's Zero. So then straight away, the first thing I want to point out is the fact that this was another super long chapter. It was 50 pages long. Obviously, the first chapter was 80 pages long, and that is insane. I understand it was the first chapter, so I was like, okay, we'll go back to like 20 next chapter. But no, Hero Mashima hitting us again with a 50 page long chapter. So we got more extended Eden Zero greatness, and I'm so, so excited for that. However, I do not think this chapter was perfect. Maybe not necessarily the chapter's perfect, but I've still got my own little bits which I want to nitpick at with this series, so I might cover those away first. I'm not too sure. Actually, I think straight off the bat, what we'll cover is straight from the beginning of the chapter. Basically, the chapter starts with one of these robotic dragon ships in space type thing. And we see this, this woman. She seems to be some sort of alien being. She's not human. She's kind of got like a bluey green tinted screen, uh, skin tone. And she, she's talking about Shinky and how is he going to become a hero of legends or a king of demons, something along those lines. And we actually see that these huge dragon ship things are literally nothing other than just a tiny little speck in size compared to this woman just in space. She is this humongous giant S just... I suppose floating around out of space like that I that really just blew me away I was quite shocked by that and that is a welcome new addition because obviously if I'm not mistaken we never got anything like that in fairy tales so that's fine but I mean I didn't recognize the character design so that's something, I suppose, you know. So far, 90% of the characters, we've, uh, you know, we, we can conveniently have, we feel like we might have seen them somewhere before. I can't quite put my finger where, but we feel like we've seen them before. Whereas this character, now I might be completely mistaken, or maybe it's someone who looks like someone from Rave Master, but I did not recommend recognise this character design at all. So, big W for Eden Zero and Hero Mashima right there. The other thing is, is we get a bit more of an insight into what Rebecca does as a job. A bit more of the whole YouTube thing, because we know she was she was a content creator, you know. Similar to a lot of us, I think we can all relate there, and I feel like that's where... That's what Hiromashim is actually uh, aiming for. I feel like he's trying to relate to a lot of the newer generation, because let's be honest, being a YouTuber right now, it's kind of like the popular thing to be so he's definitely trying to relate to those teens but it's actually it's not called youtube in this world this universe it's called b cube i believe and rebecca even says oh yeah me and and happy we are b cubers and she's kind of showing it to shiki and he's watching it and he thinks oh that's so so cool and after this, basically, she says that she's going to sign him up, Shiki, up as a adventurer. And that, you know, something like, you're strong, blah, blah, blah. And basically, he, he she takes him to an adventurer's guild. And I don't know what to think of that. Because, obviously, Fairy Tale was all about guilds more specifically what type of guilds adventure guilds so there's every chance that this adventure guild in eden zero might be completely different to what it's like in fairy tale or at least have a substantial difference compared to the fairy tale guilds however and I know this might just sound stupid, but I think I would have at least been a little bit more happy 
if he just called them something other than guilds, if that makes sense. Because I just feel as if the whole guild thing has kind of been run into the dirt at this point with Fairy Tail, but it is what it is. Whether or not the guild's going to become a huge thing, I imagine it is because, you know, just get that feeling that he's definitely sticking to a lot of the core fairy tale elements with Eden Zero, which I'm fine with as long as he improves on them. Because personally, I loved fairy tale, but it had a hell of a lot of problems. So if he fixes those problems, I'm more than happy with Eden Zero being similar to it. Anyway, after that, we then see Happy actually get kidnapped by some kind of like thieving guy. And we find out that Happy is from the planet Exceed. Yes, that's right. It's not spelt the same. And I don't think in Japanese, at least, it might not even be pronounced the same. I'm not too sure. They did have a little noted bit on the uh, manga chapter where they said, it's not exactly the same, I think it might be spelt differently, pronounced differently, something like that, to the exceeds of fairy tale. But I still thought it was quite a cool little, little like Easter egg link type thing throwback. Because for those of you who don't know, uh, Happy's species, the whole flying cat things in fairy tale where they come from, their species was called exceeds. So the fact that we see Happy is from the planet Exid is a it's quite a cool little throwback to fairy tale, you know. I don't think we've had I had enough of them just yet, but you know, at least that's that's a welcome one. I liked that person. I thought it was quite a quite a warming touch. Anyway, while Happy is being kidnapped, uh, we get a bit of a backstory between Happy and Rebecca while this is all going on while Shiki is chasing after this this robber and we see that Happy was just abandoned and left alone at a young age and so was Rebecca they were both homeless young and abandoned at least that's what Happy says Happy says I don't know I just presume I was abandoned and kicked out and left alone and Rebecca's saying how she's in the same situation let's be friends and that's kind of where the relationship starts and they become these best friends and they're just inseparable and then and this was a this was quite a dark twist which i didn't expect from a hero mashima basically happy was involved in an accident uh when him and rebecca was still young. This was before they even met Shiki, blah, blah, blah. They were still very, very young at the time. But basically, Happy was hit by a bus, I believe. I want to say he was hit by a bus and basically he was killed and you can see him lying there lifeless with in a pile of blood and Rebecca's run out to him. She is crying her eyes out. I'm not going to lie. It was a very, very emotional scene. However... What really shocked me, because I was just expecting something like, you know, oh, well, we know Happy's alive, so, you know, I can't feel that emotional, but I still did. But I was expecting something to happen when I turned the page to be like, oh, he's still alive, or don't worry, I can revive him, or I will sacrifice myself and revive him, or something like that, some crazy power, something along those lines, and he'd come back to life. However, when I did flip the page, I was in shock basically we see this bit where rebecca and happy just kind of completely switch they just change and they kind of just get into battle zone and happy's like you ready rebecca let's do this and then happy is actually an android it's not the real happy the real happy was actually turned his dead body was turned into a robot and Happy turns into two freaking guns that Rebecca shoots with. I was blown away and it was incredibly badass. Like, wow. I was absolutely shook when I saw that. Like, like I said, I was expecting something when I flipped the page. But that was way, way, way down on my list of expectations. I was 
blown away when I saw that. I do have one little nitpick. It's only because it was a bit of a problem in fairy tale, in my opinion. The fact that they pointed out that, oh no, they're made of ether bullets so they don't kill anybody. Way! And I'm just kind of like, hmm, yeah, that's fine. But Hiromashima, please remember one of your biggest hiccups with fairy tale was the fact that you never killed off anybody. No one ever dies in fairy tale. If they do die, they will come back 100% if they're an important character. So, like I said, it was a bit of a nitpick. I don't want this to kind of foreshadow the whole that no one's gonna die type ordeal thing that we had in fairy tale, but we'll see where it takes us. One other thing I want to point out when Shiki was actually fighting this robber, we've still got the whole we can destroy an entire village or city or whatever landscape, but it's okay because we saved the day. I mean, that was something that was quite funny in fairy tale the fact that endless amounts of mass destruction ensued, but fairy tale, you know. They're always praised, way, but yeah, it's just something a little fun. But overall, did I enjoy the chapter? Heck, yes, I enjoyed the chapter. Am I worried that it might go a bit too fairy tale ish? Yes, I am. There's one big thing I'm missing, I've just realised. We've got the reveal of a new character at the end of the chapter who looks a hell of a lot like Urza. Like, to the point of just identical now i'm not too sure whether or not this is going to be a good guy or girl or a bad guy girl i'm not too sure which side they're gonna be on because they already knew about shiki because there was this guy running to her she was a princess a, a, a princess of space i imagine something like that and he was saying like He's moved, He's on. he was spotted on the planet Blue Garden. And then I think she said something like, let's go and take a look, something like that. So I'm not too sure whether or not she's going to be a good a good person or a bad person. We will see next, cha uh, next chapter. One thing I do want to touch on is the fact that I can't remember her first name. It began with an E again. It was also four letters, just like Urza. But her name this time was Crimson. Obviously, Urza's last name was Scarlet, so another little similarity there is not a, it's not a bad one. It's just again a cool little kind of throwback slash linking with Urza, uh, showing that he's he's. I mean, Hero Masham is obviously going to be aware that he's kind of reusing character designs, but it is what it is. So obviously, Crimson, Scarlet, they're kind of like different shades of the same color, like a red type vibe. So the, there was that, and that's basically that's where the chapter ended. That was the cliffhanger. Next week, I think he said we were getting 30 pages. So we've gone from 80 to 50 to 30. And then I imagine after that, we'll be getting the normal 15 to 20 pages. But guys, Eden Zero so far has been a wild ride. If you enjoyed Fairy Tale, then I 100% do recommend you read this manga because I guarantee you will also love this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of this chapter and if you're reading Eden Zero and if you think it's going to be a complete complete fairy tale ripoff or if you're going to learn from his mistakes in the past. Subscribe if you're not ready to become a member of the Senpai Squad and I'll see you guys in another video. But until then, peace.